Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Switch Suspension, the TV show. Uh, this is our first week uh, going on our weekly format, so we're going to be dropping a video for you guys every Friday. So this episode, we're focusing on the 72 Stepside C10 Twin Turbo truck. That truck is equipped with a Nelson Racing 427 Twin Turbo motor, capable of around 2,000 horsepower. It's got two fuel systems, 2415 intro wheeled up uh, monster. So we've been working on all the sheet metal under the hood. Jason finished up the firewall, finished up the inner fenders, worked on a nice core support and radiator filler. We install our hood hinges on it, our cow mount style hood hinges with the gas assist struts. They work good, especially in the summertime when everything's warm. Kind of clean up the engine bay. You lose the hood hinges when you, when you get rid of the inner fenders on the early 60s trucks. On the late 60s trucks, 67 to 72, just the hood hinge mechanism gets in the way of your tires as you lay down. So we move the hinges up into the cow, flush them into there, do a little bit of welding on the hood. Hood opens by itself, stays open. And speaking of some of the sheet metal on that truck, so that C10 is originally a 1972. We have equipped it with the 1967 style hood, front fenders, and then we'll also shave the rear marker lights on the bed as well on the step side fenders. So it just has none of those side markers like a 67 truck would have. Uh, this truck, Isai is the owner of this truck. He's been building it for a while. We ended up pulling it out of, or he pulled it out of another shop that uh, wasn't working on it for him. So he waited his turn a little bit, and now we're hot and heavy on it, getting through all the sheet metal work. All right, hey guys, thanks again for watching. We really appreciate it. Make sure you share our channel with any friends you think would like us. Hit the like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Time to get to work. Uh, just trying to clean up some of this mess with some older orders. Me and Brian had to step in and get some of this stuff handled. Marco's gone for the rest of the week, so gotta step in and uh, help get it all caught up. Yeah, Brian's been packing up a bunch of wheels for uh, Todd over at Low Boy Motorsports. I keep sweating like crazy over there. FedEx picking up, Express, FedEx Express, FedEx Ground, all of the above. Pretty soon we're gonna have some of my freight guys picking up. It's crazy today. Friday, everything's going out. We're getting it done. He wanted to uh, learn how to load a car into a trailer, so I was gonna do that later. Yeah, but you should probably bring him over and you know teach him and stuff. I mean, sitting when you're wearing a butt plug just hurts. <laughs> Mike's like, damn it. So with the sheet metal on this truck, uh, there has been a lot of challenges with the, the big engine, the big wheels, uh, the amount of drop that the truck has. The front fender wells are definitely something that we have had to, uh, had to make a lot of small pieces. So instead of just one piece, real simple fenders like a normal inner fender might be, there's a lot of facets on the fender where things are passing through them, passing around them. I gotta make sure I have steering ability at low at a low height. There was a lot of small pieces, different shapes. Uh, probably looked kind of funny when it was when it was coming together. Now that they're one piece, they make a lot more sense. The radiator cover was another one. A lot of different angles, a lot of different things going on there. Just continued to, you know, a lot of a lot of little patterns made out of tape and paper piecing things together, lots of little measurements. and The hood was another challenge that came to us once we got everything in there. Um, the problem with trucks like this is everything that you cut and modify to allow something else to move makes something else have to move. Once we got the radiator to fit, I had to make a new cover for it, I had to make the wheel wells, then I had to cut into the hood. The radiator itself, uh, the cap was gonna stick into the hood, there were parts of the hood that would have hit the, the core support, had to do uh, I had to do some modifications of the hood, and then once again, you gotta make pieces to cover them to make them look good, rebuild the structure on the hood. It's all just piles on top of itself as you go. So now we're moving on to the bed, and the bed has got its own challenges. Yeah, so this is gonna support, this is gonna be the structure for the back panel. Um, it's also gonna support the back of the wood. So we'll build a piece of sheet metal that'll cover this and make this look nice. Probably put some jumper lugs in here if it gets a dead battery, that kind of thing, maybe a shut off switch the batteries. Not as much as under the hood because I'm not dealing with the big turbos and stuff back there. I am though dealing with 24 by 15 inch wheels and it's a step side so which adds another challenge to the fact that the fenders are a little bit lower and there's not a whole lot you can do with them. So the fenders have been lifted up. Oh, I've gone ahead I've made some tubs for the rear now and they're not real big tubs on the inside because we have the step side fender to the outside. 
Uh, measured for the floor now, we're gonna set up the floor. <laughs> do the, uh, gotta do a rear panel to block off the bed now that the floor is lifted and just continue on with a few other little sheet metal projects. Tell me you told me he doesn't want to work on any of your cars. I don't think that's what he said. <laughs> so Jason has he's got a lot of hours in all the front sheet metal for this guy. He's got everything else uh, pulled off of the front end of this truck, all the custom sheet metal for finish welding and finish fitment. So he's over there taking care of that. The truck just looks super cool without the sheet metal, I think. Open wheel race car, but now the, uh, his core support brace is like filler pieces. I think one of my favorite pieces for the front end. The tubs are cool, but his little filler piece uh, finished up the front end a lot on it. Yeah, so on this truck, we installed our, uh, our switch suspension brand um, hood hinges. They're for your 60s and uh, early 70s trucks that when you're gonna lay them out on a big wheel, the fender well has to move. So anybody that's done that knows that once you do that, the hood hinge is in the way and it becomes a chore. So this is a product that we sell here that allows you to move the hood hinges inboard, use the factory hood. I'm trying not to eat the bolt this time. You know, not make any major modifications to anything on the truck. It can actually be done to a painted truck with minimal damage. The only thing that you would have to do is uh, repaint underside of the hood where you weld on the, the plates. They're a very nice product and easy to put in if you can follow basic instructions. Well, we finally got to the bottom of this thing, welding the uh, trans tunnel in. Right now, just finalizing, getting all the little spots welded up, get the underside cleaned up, ground up. Well, I had to make some reliefs in the hood to clear all of the other uh, modifications I had to do. So when I made the new panels, this is a structure piece of the hood. So bead rolled it for both style and for a little bit of structure on the sheet of metal so it wouldn't just be a flat piece. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another segment of Know About It. I'm Noah. Today we're going to be talking about AccuAir's new VU4. So AccuAir did go out of business at one point. They are back. They got bought out by a company called R9. This is newly designed by AccuAir, making it a little bit more serviceable. They are going to be NPT fittings on there versus the old style that was a pressed in cartridge. It's going to make this thing a lot more serviceable. One starts to leak, you know, you can just change out that fitting and be good to go. This is the new AccuWare, so they do offer a warranty on it. You do have to register it to get that warranty. Still going to be the same plug and play design to work with any of the other components. The new VU4 is going to come with all the fittings you need if you're running 3 8 line. They are going to be quarter NPT to 3 8 push to connect fittings that come with it as well as your pigtail that you need to wire this thing up. You can find these on our website. It's gonna be under air suspension management. If this isn't exactly what you're looking for, we have multiple other options. If you wanna give us a call, get you set up with what you need. This is a pretty simple plug and play, you know, thread and plug in your airline, good to go system. If you have any questions about the new AccuAir VU4, give us a call, we can get you helped out. If you don't think this is the valve for you, we have multiple other options we can get you set up with. You can find this valve as well as all the other air management kits we offer at www.switchsuspension.com. Man, I just now saw the, the two fuel tanks. That's pretty sick. I've never seen that before. But be able to have that horsepower on, I mean, that's really actually, whoever thought of that, that's really brilliant. And what a bullet. I don't know the whole history, but I know that this truck held something, you know, whether it was in his family or something that was special. And it's just nice to see that it's getting done. Yeah, it's getting done. And it's, and it's, it's got a ton. <laughs> holy smokes, man. I don't know how you got all this in here, man, but holy cow, dude. I don't have it all in here. But the fuel and everything on this is crazy. I love the stance on it too. I mean, I can't believe you. <laughs> oh, it's definitely got the Dino stance to it. Yeah, I like that nose down. Oh yeah, yeah, this is sick. The fire world turned out super nice on it too. I mean, really nice. I mean, I think you got everything clearance pretty good, even the the, the, the turbos and everything coming through. Yeah, apart. I mean, I've got as much clearance as, <laughs> as there is available in a C10. I had much? to modify the thing. Yeah, how much did you have to modify on all this sheet metal? I mean, it looks like you've literally touched everything on this. 
core support, the firewall, even the hood. Yeah, there's not. Oh my gosh, you had to move all this. You had to radi you had to clearance all this too. I had to make my own hood latch. Uh, so yeah, no, there's nothing sheet metal wise that hasn't been modified to get this to work. Radiator's forward like three inches from stock, maybe four. The motor's back another two, down three from where it was. The yeah, hood had to, to be modified. The hood. And this is one of the lower hoods. Yeah. It's not like the big, the '73 hood that's bigger and taller. I tell you what, man, you have got skills. It just the fun of this truck is going to be the fact that it has a completely stock-looking hood, fenders, everything. You're and not going to be expecting this when you open the hood. 24, 22 is on the front. 22 and 24, 24 by 24, 15, 15 the on the rear. Yeah, I mean, and first of all, it's the step side, so you know I'm digging that. It's going to look like your standard C10 from the outside, which is going to be cool. You know, big wheels laid out. You're going to open the hood, and it's going to kind of be a shocker. Well, I mean, I like even the profile where the bed, it seems like, did the bed come up a little bit to meet the uh, fender? The fender moved up. That's what it is. See, I like that when it's so subtle, you don't get it. I mean, this profile was right, but this diminished right there, so that's pretty slick. That's cool. And, and you know what, man? We all know that you can make things lay on the ground, but I like the fact that it has my stance on it. Dino stance. Sorry. <laughs> I'm older than all you guys, so I get to call it that. Got a bitchin' frame on it. I mean, and it's built. That frame is... Built. That, that guy went ham on that frame. Yeah, I got a chance to see those guys one time at LS, at, or, uh, what an LST, and I, they, yeah. they built some really crazy. Yeah, I met them out there as well. Yeah, now it's time to move on to doing the bed. I got to mount the fuel tanks, mount a battery. So whose idea was to run two fuel? The customer? That's uh, Tom Nelson. That's from Nelson Racing. Oh, Nelson Racing? Yeah. I just never seen that. That's ridiculously rad and expensive so well i mean it's the cool thing about it is it it allows you to switch the truck over yeah without a major deal you know if you're running the motor that needs race fuel but you don't want to run race fuel in it you've got a full tank of regular gas you've got to run it out of there or drain it to put race gas in it if you want to go fast this guy he can decide do i want to drive it to get groceries today or do i want to go so to the when you track? roll up on that mustang with the stupid dumb pipe you just switch over well you wouldn't even need race gas to beat a mustang Man, that's a lot to put in a step side. Look at that hoop. That is rad. And that tire, when he puts that bullet and you put that horsepower, that tire's going to hold that. As long as there's enough weight in the back end, which 300, pounds, things, 300 yeah. pounds of fuel back here and, you know, another... And you know what? It's got a really stout frame, so it's got some weight on it, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. That frame's really stout. I mean, It that... may not hook all of it, but it's definitely going to hook. It's going to go. I want to go for a ride. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to watch next week for more crazy adventures. And remember, life moves pretty fast. If you don't slow down and look around once in a while, you'll miss it. I think this is one of those episodes of the Twilight Zone where everybody disappears but me. Uh, I'm scared. You guys, if I don't make it home, my name's Jason, and I did not go willingly. <laughs>